Here comes the money. You're now listening to the Gambling with Gold podcast with Jason Gold. Presented by Champions Round. Welcome back to Gamble with Gold. My name is Jason Gold, and as always, I am joined by my buddy from the Action Network, Dan Titus. Dan, how we doing heading into Week 10? Man, Week 9 was rough, bro. Uh, following up a 4-1 and one performance in Week 8 with a 1-4 and four best bets on Week 9. Yeah, bloodbath, man. The only one I got right was the Cleveland Browns. They stomped out the uh, the Bengals, which we talked a lot about since, you know, the following Tuesday or the previous Tuesday. Um, but yeah, man, I got to I got to lick my wounds a little bit looking to recover here in week 10. Let's get to it. Uh, before we talk about all the lines of week 10, one thing for champions, right? What I talk about, we have a seven stakes contest that is live right now on the app. Go in and you are playing for a Michael Vick signed football. One of my favorite players in the game. So Mike Vick signed oh, yeah. football. All you have to do enter the contest and win, baby. That's it. We got 50 spots. Go in it right now. Try to beat us all. We have, the seven stakes are all on one game. It is all on Dallas, Atlanta. We will get to that right after we talk about Thursday Night Football. That is one of my, mm, probably the game I'm most excited to watch this week. I think it'll be a fun one, especially after we saw the Falcons, one of my best bets last week, finally came through, although they tried to give it away. God, they tried they so hard. But <laughs> they, they kept it together. They somehow got the win. And Dallas absolutely shut the bed. So we'll talk about that one a little bit. First game of the week. Thursday night football, the Baltimore Ravens minus seven and a half at the Miami Dolphins over under 46 and a half right now on DraftKings. The Ravens coming off of a win against the Minnesota Vikings in overtime and Miami in what we called the gross ball. It lived up to its name, buddy. Uh, nine, turno- nine turnovers, 27 total points. That game was utterly, utterly disgusting. And I hope that no one ever has to watch either of those two quarterbacks play again. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to get to see Tyrod again, someone that we were really high on. We thought we were waiting for him to uh, come back. We thought we were going to put some bets on him. We did, and he stunk. So what do we got in this game with the Baltimore Ravens and Miami? We don't know who's starting. It might be Tua, might be Brissett. Not sure it matters. Yeah, I actually bet uh, one of my props hit. It was uh, Tyrod Taylor over 30 and a half passing attempts. Blew through that. But he also turned over the ball like so many times, like what, three or four times. So, yeah, just disgusting. I played him in fantasy and uh, the, the opponent that I was going against also had a bye week. He wound up starting Jacoby Brissett. I mean, it doesn't get any gro- more gross than that. And uh, yeah, not really excited for uh, this week, to be honest, like this this Thursday night game. You got the Baltimore Ravens who pulled out another crazy victory coming from behind versus like the Miami Dolphins. Like we don't know if we're going to get to us. So. At seven and a half, man, I, the way that the Ravens have been playing, it makes me lean the Miami Dolphins here because this is this is a, a Baltimore Ravens team that always starts slow. Um, we saw uh, Lamar Jackson not really find his groove until late. Um, it, it could be a good get right spot for the Ravens, but they're they're taking care of business. They're still winning the game, so um, I don't see much urgency here against a a really poor Miami Dolphins team eked out a win, but they only have two of them. So I think they can cover seven and a half points though. I am very interested in this game because I think that Miami plus seven and a half is a good spot, especially on a short week. I think that using Baltimore as a teaser piece at minus one and a half is probably really smart. Probably the best move. My concern with betting on the Dolphins is that maybe this isn't relevant anymore, but the last time the Ravens were there was week one, two years ago, Lamar's MVP season. When they just absolutely, I think they threw a 50 burger on them real quick. And I'm not sure if this defense of Miami has changed all that much. Obviously, they're they're a worse defense, but Manic haven't changed that much. Maybe Brian Flores is a bad, bad matchup for Lamar Jackson. Or the other Lamar Jackson is a bad matchup for Brian Flores in this defense. Uh so that would concern me a little bit here. But yeah, my initial lean is towards the Miami plus seven and a half, also. Yeah, I don't I mean. Miami, I mean, they're five and one, uh, six and one, actually, 10 and four, excuse me, 10 and four against the spread in their last 14 home games. Um, I, I got to feel like, I don't know, seven and a half just seems like a lot for a team like the Baltimore Ravens that's been very inconsistent and seem to struggle against defenses to kind of get adjusted. So, yeah, initially, I think I like the idea of the teaser piece more, use them as you tease the uh, the Ravens down. 
uh, to, to one and a half. I think that that's probably the better look. But yeah, if I, if I gun in my head, I think I'm going to go with the, with the Dolphins here. There are a lot of teaser pieces this week, and it scares the living crap out of me. Like, not not gross teasers either. Like, very public teasers. So I'm going to have to be very, very careful about where I actually put this stuff. Uh, not sure that I want to be on the minus one and a half come Thursday or tie a lot to it. Um, but let's get into the games on Sunday for week 10. Atlanta currently plus eight and a half at the Dallas Cowboys over under 54 and a half. What do we like in this one? That 10 points, man. I, I don't know how uh, Dallas didn't do too hot on that last week uh, against the Broncos. You got to expect there's going to be some positive regression there. This is the first time that we've seen the Dallas Cowboys actually not show up on offense. Dak looked like he was, I don't know. He just looked rusty to be honest. I don't think there's any other word to put it. Like he just looked like he didn't have his, uh, he wasn't on the same page with his receivers. CD lamb did pretty much nothing. Amari Cooper had a pretty good game, but um, you know, really seeing Ezekiel Elliott really shoulder the load here. So Atlanta Falcons defense, isn't that impressive. You know, they played a great game against the New Orleans Saints. So it was Trevor points. Simeon, though, Trevor Simeon, it was, it was, um, but still, I mean, there, we saw the Saints the, the week before go toe to toe with the, with the, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So true. I, I don't know, man. I, I get, this is another one of those, the line is too, the line is, a, the line is pretty high, man. And I don't know that I can trust Dallas, but part of me leans like Dallas is going to kick their ass. I, I think that Dak's going to wake up. Give me, give me Dallas minus 10. It's too I mean, high, but just give me Dallas. Right now, DraftKings, it's only eight and a half. So a good number that's, for you. That's, if a, that's you a good number. Da- you want to bet on number. Dallas. Again, another great spot for a teaser piece. Eight and a half to two and a half. We're right in the sweet spot of where you want to take this. Absolutely. Uh, my initial lean was towards Atlanta, but I, I definitely see the, look, Atlanta second game on the road. They just played a really great game against New Orleans. Divisional opponent. They put it all on the line for that game. Dallas, sleepy spot versus uh, the Broncos coming in. Maybe they come out, Dak, second week back. They could hammer him for sure. I could see that. Uh, I'll probably stay away from the line here. Minus two and a half is a teaser piece, very attractive. I do like the under in this game a little bit. 54 and a half numbers that I have are more like 52 and a half, something like that. Uh, I think this Dallas defense may be a little bit more of a get ready spot. I could see this being. I mean, even if it's like 30, 24, you're still under here. I, I think 54 and a half might be a, a good bet for me. Yeah, interesting. The uh, I mean, that's the highest that the spread has been in the last four meetings, but the over has gone 4 0 in their last four meetings in Dallas. Uh, so something to think on there. But um, yeah, Falcons have done a good job covering over the, the last five, too, uh, 4 and 1 against the spread. They're currently in the playoff picture. They're the number seven seed in the NFC. Unbelievable. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Crazy. Talk about talk about something that's gross. Oh my god! <laughs> the NFC bottom barrel. It's so end nasty. <laughs> All right, let's move over to uh, Buffalo at the Jets. Buffalo currently minus twelve and a half over under forty seven and a half. Jets put up a thirty burger with three different quarterbacks against Indianapolis, <laughs> and they have ten days. I mean, we can talk about that game. That was, game was that game was like the most fun, disgusting game I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Josh Johnson comes in. The guy had 19 teams he's been on. Throws for uh, what did he rip? 303 touchdowns off after my 303 touchdowns, dude. I think at this point it's just whoever's playing quarterback for the Jets. As long as it's not Zach Wilson, it's a good look. <laughs> they ball right? out. They ball <laughs> out. And meanwhile, we got Buffalo coming off of the most disgusting loss of the season, nine Ugh. six at Jacksonville. Gross. I mean, I don't know what we take from that game. I have a lot of numbers that point towards the fact that I should be betting Buffalo in this game. Their point differential is off the charts. I should bounce back on that. They're the best team yards per play defensively and net. Uh, the Jets, I guess they've been playing a little bit better now with Zach Wilson out. The defense is really getting cooked right now, though. This feels like a Buffalo get-right spot if there ever was one. And maybe they're going to be super motivated not to take any sort of sleepy spots here and just pound one out, go like 40-7, to seven, something like that. I'm leaning towards going on Buffalo minus 12 and a half, even though that number is egregiously high for a divisional matchup. How about you? I got to stay away, man. After I just blew it last week on the best bet, thinking that they would cover 14 and a half against the worst team. One of the worst teams in the NFL and the Jaguars. I can't, they can't be trusted at this point. Um, Josh Allen. I don't know. He hasn't looked very good over the last few weeks, man. And, uh, 
It looks like Zach Moss could miss the game with a concussion. So we're going to see Devin Singletary in there. Where's Stefan Diggs at? Someone yeah. send out a search party. We haven't seen him. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know that I can trust him. I, I think it makes sense. But, you know, to the point that I just made about the Jets quarterbacks looking competent, this offense looking competent, as long as Zach Wilson isn't playing, I, 13 points, why not? Give me the Jets. The, the problem that Buffalo, despite the fact that they've been, <clears throat> they haven't played as well as we kind of think that they're, or they haven't played as good as we think. Nine, six. Nine, but their defense is still great. Like, I know that the Jets have been scoring, but I don't anticipate them scoring anything in this game. The, the offense can still this is, not this is your right. Pri- this, is, this is your prime spot. You love the divisional matchups. And the Bills I know. Are on the road. I This is why I'm almost more confident in the Bills. This is, you know this me. Is, this is this is this the is grossest of the gross, gross spot. I know yeah. exactly <laughs> that, and the fact that I want to go Buffalo in this gross. game. Oh my god, <laughs> put it, bro. I, th- <laughs> I think that's why I want to lean against it right now. Like I'm, I don't know. I'm convincing myself more and more on Buffalo as I talk to him about it more. This is not great. Uh, might end up being a stay away from me. All right, let's move over to uh, Tampa Bay minus nine and a half. At the Washington football team, currently over under 51 in this game. Tampa Bay coming off of a bye. So is Washington. I don't know who's getting the get right spot here. Tampa Bay is off a of bye, getting healthy. I don't know. What do you think? I, I don't even know what to expect out of Washington at this point. Uh, yeah. Logan Thomas is practicing. Antonio Gibson got, I guess, essentially two weeks of rest because he didn't really play much um, in week eight. Um, he spelled, he was spelled by Jared Patterson and, and Jer- JD McKissick. So that's what you do against the, the you can't run against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, you're only going to throw it. We haven't seen Terry McLaurin be super explosive just because I think defenses are keen in on him. Uh, Tom Brady, Bruce Arians off the bye. I just don't like these numbers, man. Um, it's probably a stay away from me, but gun to my head, I'll, I'll take Tampa Bay just because they're just a more explosive, uh, better team. Yeah, so I don't want any part of that number either. I think this is a good stay away spot. Over under 51, kind of lean towards the under there. Intriguing, intriguing. Yeah, kind of lean towards the under a little bit. Uh, I do think that Tampa Bay will have success offensively. I don't think they're going to really get home against Brady in this game. Washington through the air, can they get on this Tampa Bay defense? I anticipate that their cornerbacks, or at least their secondary room, will be a little bit healthier with the, the bye. Yeah. Um, and they didn't really get beat up against the Saints either. So that would be good for them. My lean very slightly would be towards Tampa Bay, but that's just like, I don't know. This is a total stay away for me on that side. Yeah, I like your I like your angle with the under, actually. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Tampa got up early. Maybe we see a little bit more of ground and pound, you know, run out the clock. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this disappoints a little bit on the, the game total. All right, let's go over to Saints Titans. Saints currently plus two and a half at the Titans, over under 44 and a half. Saints coming off a loss, but still in it, still fighting. We don't know if it's going to be Simeon or or uh, Taysom Hill in this one. Taysom got a little bit more run at the end of that Atlanta game and seemed to spark a little bit. Uh, Tennessee, man, I don't know what to say about that game against the Rams. That was one of the most shocking results of the season. Might have been even more shocking, honestly, than Jacksonville Buffalo to me. I was we, so we, confident. We, on the- we we got lit up on that one. <laughs> we oh were my talking, god! We were talking heavy, heavy Rams, and they just fucking shit the bed. I mean, that was terrible. Go back and look at the stats, though. Tennessee's defense played great, and you know what? We've shat on Tennessee's defense all season, but man, the game against Kansas City, this game, they might be a little bit better than we we think they are. Um, but their offense without Derrick Henry, I go back and look at the stats, yards per play, all of it. They were terrible against the Rams. They were like really bad. Not it was good a good game all. script to jump out. Basically, they had to one play to be up 14 nothing offensively. Uh, the rest of the game, it was pretty trash. So, you know, I think that I got to roll with the Saints in this one. Plus two and a half. I do not trust this Tennessee offense uh, to do much of anything against the Saints defense. So give me the under 44 and a half. Give me the Saints plus two and a half and give me the Saints. This might be actually one of my best bets. Saints plus eight and a half as a teaser piece going up through the three and the seven. I don't think the Saints or I don't think the Titans are going to blow them out at all. Yeah, man. I think that uh, 
we were talking about the Titans eventually being uh, a team that might regress, and they've been riding this extreme high, coming off some really good wins against the Chiefs, and then they beat the this Rams. This is the best four-game winning streak in the NFL this season. It's not even close. Uh, e- easily. I mean, you could, you could, one could argue that Mike Vrabel is moving up, moving up the charts for uh, Coach of the Year here. Oh, I, um, I think he is Coach of the Year right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, for all those reasons, got to fade him. Plus yeah. three, I'm going with the Saints. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. I love it. I love it. Yeah. The plus two and a half, plus three. Give me that teaser piece, baby. I love that. Give me the plus eight, plus nine, somewhere in that range. I'm all about it. Uh, and plus 130 on the money line. Might sprinkle a little bit there. Road team is 4-0 and against the spread in their last four meetings. So, yeah, give me the, give me the Saints here. All right. Let's go over to the... Two and six Jacksonville Jaguars. Look at Urban Meyer getting a first win on (laughs) U.S. soil. Going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Colts are minus 10, over under 47 and a half. You got to fade the Jaguars here, right? We got to be all over the Colts minus 10. Man, uh, this is just another one of those gross numbers, man. How am I on the favorites in the gross spots? (laughs) What am I doing? Did my brain get lost in Vegas or something? This is so anti me. But I kind of feel you, though, man, like uh, the Colts, I think that they're in a better position where I mean, I don't know. I feel like the, the Bills were due for a letdown. They were kicking everybody's ass by a wide margin. Uh, weren't really tested. That was just them. They got caught sleeping, got caught with their pants down. The Colts, they've been looking good it's coming off of that Thursday win. Um, I don't know. I feel like after that win over the uh, was it the foreigners, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they had the bad better. loss of the Titan. They had the bad loss of the Titans, but they but were fourteen nothing. Yeah, yeah, and then they were great last week. All right. So at this point, uh, yeah, I, I think I'll take the t- I'll take a, I'll, t- I'll take the bait. Give me the Colts minus ten. I think that there will be, be a better it will be a better matchup for them. I think the Colts are a completely different team when their offensive line is healthy and they're fully healthy. Saying, so- Jonathan Taylor is probably going to rush for like a hundred and fifty plus. Yeah, you stamp that. Absolutely. So. Colts offensive line, completely healthy. You saw them against, I mean, I know the Jets defense, whatever, but they did whatever they wanted to do. Now, the the Colts defense was a little bit of an issue, but who's starting for Jacksonville? Like, Trevor Lawrence was terrible. C.J. Beathard, he actually played great against the Bills somehow. He had the throw of the year. But uh, I don't trust them to get this game done. Feels like this team's going to be overconfident coming off of a, I mean, that's the win of the season for them. That was their Super Bowl against the Bills, so. I don't see them doing much against Indianapolis. Give me the minus 10. Absolutely. Don't tease this down, though. Don't don't be an idiot and go to the four. Just, just keep it at <laughs> no, 10. Not a good number. L- yeah. Lose your money on that if you're going to lose it. All right, let's go over to <laughs> the Detroit Lions plus eight at the Pittsburgh Steelers over under 42. Plus eight and 42 seems a little high. Maybe I'm going to be on the Lions. Talk about me getting gross. Here we go. About time. That's not even gross. I thought like this is standard procedure. <laughs> um love Detroit Lions here because why not man like the Steelers aren't that good we saw it on Monday night that game was a snooze fest until until late and uh you know Najee Harris is is their best offensive player at this point Deontay Johnson had a couple of good plays but Ben Roethlisberger can't push the ball down the field at all so I don't know I thought like the, the the Lions could definitely keep it within nine and a half points here man give me the give me the dogs here I mean just give me the spot Absolutely. The Lions coming off of a bye and the Steelers with only six days rest after yeah. what ended up being a very difficult game for them at the end. Claypool might which not it play. Really, which it really shouldn't have. You know what no. I mean? Like, I mean, they tried to give that game away multiple they times did. there. At the, end. Look, that was the, re- the, refs had, the refs had their back for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So we're both on the Lions plus eight. Over under 42. Anything interesting there? Uh, I lead in the under. Um, just from what I see, I just can't trust the uh, Steelers at this point, man. Their offense is trash. Absolutely. All right, let's go to Cleveland at New England. Actually, maybe this is the best game of the weekend. Uh, Cleveland plus two and the over under 45 and a half. Browns look good without OBJ and the Patriots just keep rolling. They look like a real, real Belichick team right now. Yeah, I think that's the other team I want to play in the, uh, ah. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I kind of like the New England Patriots here, man. I was, was debating. I was like, oh, do I want to potentially tease them up? But, uh, yeah, I think I like the New England Patriots here, man. They're, uh, I think they're going to be a good spot. This is like a, this is like a prime Belichick, totally scheme on Baker Mayfield's weaknesses opportunity. Yeah. Like, Baker looked great, 
Um, and I think that that was probably just a fuck you Odell type of thing. Um, now that that's, you know, he's, he's long gone now he's on waivers. Now that all the emotions have kind of cooled, I think we'll see the uh, new England Patriots still come in with a pretty effective defense. And more importantly, Nick Chubb is probably going to miss the game because he's got COVID. And then Demetric Felton also does have uh tested positive for COVID as well. So you're going to have Darius Johnson who held it down on Thursday night a, a few weeks ago, but I don't know. That's going to be a lot. That's going to be tough sledding for uh, Baker and squad against the new England's defense. That's definitely, definitely uh, improving. Yeah, so if Chubb was playing this game, I believe it was plus one and a half before, I, I could make yeah. the argument reasonably for the Browns, and I probably would have leaned that way. Without Chubb, and I know Johnson's good, I know the offensive line, whatever, they're there, but there could be more COVID stuff coming in for the, the Browns. We don't really know. Uh, feels like New England in this spot. You're right. I feel like Belcher's going to absolutely prey on Baker. This could be a disaster for him. I do kind of like the under in this game, under 45 and a half, especially with that Chubb in the game. And Browns moving from plus two to plus eight as a teaser. Not the worst thing in the world. I expect no, it to be less no. scoring. It'll probably be within a score. Probably leaning that way. That'll probably make it way into one of my bets. But uh, mm-hmm. more of a stay away situation here. I, I keep wanting to buy or to sell on the Patriots because they've been so good the last three weeks. But... I think that this is just Belichick doing what he does. And I think he's, they got him in the right spot. They can go on a run here. Yeah. Mac Jones hasn't been super impressive, but he's getting it done. He's, he's being the game manager that Jimmy Garoppolo was when he was in the system. Um, That's all he needs. Good defense, solid running. It's the formula to success. All right, let's go on to Minnesota at the chargers plus two and a half for the Vikings over under 53 in this game. Another game where I love the under chargers move pretty slow. Love the under here. Love the first half under a lot. Uh, lean towards the Chargers winning this one. Vikings, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to get from Kirk Cousins week in and week out. I guarantee you that this game will be close. That's what the Vikings do. Every Vikings game is close. And then they blow it. That's, that's it what seems, they do. And it seems like every Chargers game has been close this year, too. So, uh, I don't know. What's your opinion on this one? I feel like minus two feels right. Um, you're right. The the With the margin of victory, they are always been pretty close. Uh, we saw the Minnesota Vikings kicking the the Ravens' ass almost all game, and then they found a way to blow it. Unfortunately, my my vision didn't come to fruition. Mike Zimmer is still the coach of the Minnesota <laughs> Vikings, but I don't know if there's how many how many close losses can you have in a season before people are like, "All right, get this guy out of here." It um, happened so two maybe, weeks ago. It happened. It happened two weeks ago. You're right. So let, let's. This is the, this is going to be the three peat here. Small margin of game. Wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings come out, get a lead, blow it. Give me the Chargers minus two. Mike Zimmer getting fired yet? Yet? Oh, the parlay, <laughs> the Minnesota parlay. I love it. I love it. Dan's Minnesota parlay is going to continue to the end of the season. It's going to be excellent. I can't wait for it. <laughs> All right, let's go on to uh, Eagles. Your birds at Denver. Denver off of an impressive win. They are favored by three points over under forty four. That seems extremely low to me. Kind of like the over 44 in this game. How about you? Mile high. I'm not I'm not mad at it, man. Uh the birds, I think that they this is a good team that they can play against in terms of like, you know, Denver really showed their their cards in terms of like putting pressure on Dak, making them uncomfortable. That's what Jalen Hurts loves. Uh give him pressure in the pocket. That man's gonna be out. So give me the birds here, plus three. I like it. Um, I feel like they're gonna come back. Have a better game against, you know, obviously they lost the Chargers, but uh, they did. I think we're going to see Jalen Hurts have to throw the ball a little bit more. Um, he hasn't done that over the last couple of weeks. We saw Sirianni completely abandon the pass and only commit to the run. I think he's going to switch it up here and make it a little bit harder for these Denver Broncos. I feel like this is a good spot to fade the Broncos off of such a massive win. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of like the – I didn't think the Birds played bad last week against the Chargers. I just think that they were overmatched in terms of talent. Uh, yeah. And I do, I do agree with you. The Broncos being able to get home against the Eagle. I think the Eagles are going to be able to throw the ball all over the place here. So, yeah, I'll, I'll lean towards the plus three with you. I might throw that in a money line round Robin dog plus the 135. Hey. I like it. But I do like the over 44. I think that one's going to be the side. Uh, this game, very interesting. There is a line out, but we don't know who's playing quarterback for either team. Seahawks plus three and a half at the Packers over under 49 points. Uh, I guess it's a stay away from me now. And until I know who's playing quarterback, I think that Russ is actually going to play. Yeah, don't know the don't know the situation with Rodgers. 
Uh, is there, should we just jump on the Seahawks plus three and a half before we know what the Rogers situation is? But see, I'm seeing it all over across the board here. I'm seeing three and a half. I'm also seeing one at four and a half as well. I believe that's on, uh, what book is that? Uh, I believe I'm seeing that at points bet. Yeah. Um, so you can get anywhere from four and a half. I, I'm jumping on three and a half with the Seahawks here, just with the possibility of Russ coming back. He came out on Twitter, had his dramatic, you know, little montage of his return to play. And so, yeah, sign me up for all that. This is this is going to be Russ coming back with a vengeance. Um, and even if Aaron Rodgers plays, I mean, he was going on his whole apology tour today yeah. and all that stuff. So, I mean, there's a good chance he might he might get back into uh, into the mix, but I'm still loving the uh, Seahawks here with Russ pissed off, ready to play, ready to get Seahawks back in the into the uh, conversation here in the, in, in the NFC West. Seems like this is the Odell Bowl. He's going to go to one of these two teams. It's Tuesday night, so we don't know who he signed with. But it seemed like he was leaning towards the Packers, but reports earlier were, were that Russ really wanted him in Seattle. That'll be interesting to see. I'm not sure it'll have any impact on this particular game. But uh, I do lean plus three and a half with Seattle, and I kind of want to jump on it now before I know anything yep. news. If this, is Jordan Lo- if this is Jordan Love versus Russ, it's actually going to be favored by the time the Sunday comes around. For sure. You'll see a big swing on that. So, and the, the way Jordan Love looked, like, I don't, I'm not a fan of him. Um, definitely mobile. You can see the talent there, but like his arm mechanics, his throwing mechanics is just whack. I just, I don't think if, if this, if Jordan Love is going to be the quarterback, man, hammer this right now. He was weird. He was really weird watching him. He's definitely mobile outside the pocket. He, like, I liked his arm strength. Like, he could throw the ball from any sort of yeah. angle really, yeah. really well. But his feet are all over the place. Like he, he doesn't know how to play quarterback or football. He, do, he doesn't really. really look like he's been watching Aaron Rodgers very much, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, all right. So we'll be on the Seahawks plus three and a half right now. Uh, Kansas City minus two and a half at the Raiders. Chiefs off. They still can't figure out what the hell is going on with their offense, but they got to win versus Jordan Love. The Raiders, obvious letdown spot against the Giants after the rug situation. I don't know where this team is at all right now. I guess I kind of trust Derek Carr to right the ship a little bit. He seems like he's been a good leader in the rock locker room. They've been able to get over all these hiccups this season. Uh, I don't know when it gets to be like enough for this team. At some point, it feels like they're going to quit. But now they have like Arnett got cut today. They're all over the place. I feel like the Chiefs at some point are going to get right. But maybe this just isn't the year. I don't know. Over under 51 and a half. Kind of like the under there, given where the two teams are right now. Yeah, I fade the other. I, I lean the other way. I'm going to take the over here just mainly because the the Chiefs didn't put up barely any points last week. I think they'll eventually figure it out. Um, this is about to be a, a grueling stretch for them. They play, they play the Raiders here. Then they play the Cowboys. Then they go to the Broncos. Then they play the Broncos. And they play the Raiders yet again. Then they play the Chargers. So like they got to get a W at some point here if they're actually going to continue to make a run for this playoff spot here and catch up. Uh, being that they're going against the Raiders here, this is probably one of the most important divisional matchups of the slate here. So um, I think that if this is this is the time, I know that the Chiefs have failed me many times this season, but I think that uh, Mahomes and, and Andy Reid are going to get it together. Two and a half points to me. I, I, that's in the sweet spot. If it goes to three, I'm probably not going to bet it, but two and a half, I'll take it. I'm I'm with you also. It's minus two and a half, minus 115 at draft. Kings right now so maybe you want to go ahead and put that bet in right now uh I don't hate if you want to put the Raiders in a teaser plus eight and a half at home don't hate that angle Chiefs money line only minus 140 right now so I, I'm probably going to hit all of those I do like the under I just I I don't know where this Chiefs offense is right now so yeah if, if I'm wrong yeah. on that fine but I do agree that they they need a win and I just feel like I trust Mahomes to get it done so Whatever. Uh, 90% of the public's going to be with me on that one. They got to win sometimes. <laughs> I got to win sometimes too. So let's ride with the Chiefs. Uh, Monday Night Football. We have the Rams at the 49ers. Rams obviously off of a terrible loss, but still in a good position in the NFC. The 49ers, I'm surprised that Kyle Shanahan is still the coach, to be honest with you. That was one of the most egregious performances that I have ever seen, losing to the Arizona Cardinals with Colt McCoy. Uh... <laughs> I, can you explain what the fuck happened to that game? Because I can't. I I just can't watch this team play football anymore, man. They suck. Like they're just they're so really bad. bad. Yeah. 
like Jimmy Graham, because I'm on the West Coast, so like I always, I'm always blessed with 49ers games, and I'm always like, man, I don't want to watch this shit. I'm turn on Red Zone. But <laughs> bless, bless. <laughs> you're right, <laughs> dude. They're so bad. Um, I gotta, I, I gotta. I mean, the public's gonna be all over the Rams here in a bounce back, but why, why shouldn't you be? Like, this is another one where I gotta, I gotta go with the public. Three and a half points. It's a good number. Uh, just give. They're gonna win by more than a field goal here. I, I just can't see. Kyle Shanahan all of a sudden and Jim, more so Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm just not yeah. buying into the fact that he can actually will this team to put up any kind of points on the board. Uh, my brain says that after what I watched from San Francisco and how putrid it was that I'm supposed to bet them now. Like that's, that's the gross gambling brain. That would be gross. the grossest bet on the board to do. <laughs> I can't do it. This is a complete stay away for me. Uh, just because I, I want to bet on the Rams. I have a good feeling they're going to win this game. They played terribly last week. They have a little bit to recover. They come back. They absolutely dominate the 49ers. But I've I've seen too many of these games. I've been in too many of these gambling situations. To know sometimes you just got to step back and let the cards fall where they may. Don't get involved. <laughs> Watch. Enjoy. I'm sure I'll have fantasy stuff on this. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to do it. I can't do it. Yeah, the public money's coming in heavy, man. 77% I'm seeing already on the uh the RAM side of things. Yeah, it's this is gonna, gonna break be... this is gonna break everyone's parlay teaser, <laughs> whatever. I know it's gonna happen. Survivor. The, 49ers, the 49ers are gonna win this game somehow. We're gonna be like, well, why didn't you do this last week when we were getting six and a half points of closing line value? Goddamn Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> Bet half a mortgage on that game. You can't win when Kyler and DeAndre are out. Go fuck yourself, Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> Should we just end the podcast oh, on that? Just me cursing yeah, oh, at Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. I love that it. That does it for uh, episode 29 of Gambling with Gold. Dan, thank you so much. As always, reminder, seven stakes contest. Go enter right now on the Champions Round app for your chance to win a Michael Vick signed football. Until Friday, we will talk to you later, and we will be back with our Week 10 Best Bets. See ya. Peace.